All right. All right. Okay. Welcome back to Metal Heroes Review, episode number 54. We're here reviewing episodes 21 and 22 of Metal Order. Yep. Yeah, and these two episodes are mostly two very much standalone episodes. Well, the first one's like, okay, so it starts out with Kiki, the basically the bad guy. He just basically was always with kids playing some fireworks. Sorry, it's on vacation. Yeah, it's a start on vacation for them, and yeah, so yeah, start on vacation for them. And, of course, they run into our friendly neighborhood biker of the series. <clears throat> Kita. Yes. He runs to Kita. Kita runs to them. And, of course, they walk off like, oh, the fire and fireflies. And then, apparently, they disappear. Yes, they disappear. And it turns out that they were kidnapped by Necros to extract their young cells and put in the monster army for some reason. Yeah, and by the way, the monster this episode is Furious Fire Jimmy in his, well, his fourth ever appearance in the series. And if really curious, he appears like two more times after this. Yeah. Just two more times. Yep, and that as far as I can tell, I think it's two more times. Uh no, he actually appears a little bit more than that. He does appear at this one, two, three, four, five, six. Probably a lot of the other episodes of hers is mostly put just like a background character, I'd say, but yeah, he's getting close to being done. So yeah, he's basically the monster of the episode. And his whole thing is basically, see, we actually, we actually attack. He fires off boxing gloves. It's a very interesting episode. I would say it's kind of similarities with, of all things, Common Rider. With the style of plot. Well, actually, with the whole scientist being forced into, well, excuse me, coerced into work with them. Yeah, this is something you'll find in Common Rider. Not usually in Middle Heroes, but, Yeah. It was definitely an episode, or of course, typical thing of like, oh, like, the guy is working because... Also, this episode was noteworthy for having Melder actually fight the beautiful secretaries for the first time. He beats him by punching him in their guts. Just punch the belly, knock him out, pretty simple. Yep. And then pretty much in the very next episode, the whole thing with this one is that we have it where we have this Biker gang being hired, being working for heroic fire jars, and the whole operation is assassinate Melder. But things start out Melder just at the docks in Yokohama. That's what he says it is. Though it looks like it's the same place that you would see also in Super Sentai, and a little bit in Kong. I would say I think the next time it appears on TV. I know it popped up in Black RX this year. I think it always popped up in some of the Sentai stuff I've watched. This is a frequently used re reused. Oh, by the way, uh, the entrance to the laboratory they had for this episode. The exterior looks very similar to the one used uh, for the house that the five siblings from Go Go Five live in. It looks looks very similar to that, with the whole steps and the with the style of doors. Like, it, it's a very similar exterior. Maybe they were used this particular building as the exterior for this house. It's possible, but the interior is different, obviously. But I think they may have reused this particular building for that series. Yeah, Toei likes doing this at times where they like reuse locations a lot. A uh, popular example is the the mining yard that Sentai loves using with the black soil, with the the mining area. Yeah, Sentai loves using the area. Common Rider uses it, and so does Metal Heroes. I don't know what's happened in uh, Ultraman yet, because I haven't got that far with that series. I'll probably get back to the series future, but not at the moment. So, 
Meanwhile, though, then he is attacked by this people, this gang called the Red Dolphins. It shows the hired by the beautiful secretaries to assassinate Milder, and of course, one of the members who turns out she's actually Chinese. Yes, Chinese. And her real gets a lot because she goes by Lee. That's all I kind of find. She's Chinese, so basically she came to Japan looking for her missing brother. It's probably boat people and her boat capsized, and she's basically here for that. And of course, thanks to some brief fighting with the Red Dolphins, Melinda convinces them that yeah, fighting him is 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 not a good idea, especially since like Lee, he is a refugee of war. And working for God Necros is a bad idea. And of course, they have no idea who that is, but once he explains who he is, yeah. And then they return the money, and then of course, they sell a bunch of monsters basically fight them. And not just jars, there's like several of them. They have jars, Garbos, and his, one of his, one of his, I think it is penultimate appearance in the series. Actually, no, he next appears in his episode 33, but he does return after this. But officially, he appears in one more episode after this. I remember there was like three of them. Let's see if I can find it here. I'm trying to find out exactly who it was, basically, that attacked them, but I can't see and find them. But, definitely two good episodes. Monster gets defeated by the end of the episode, and there's that. So, yeah. So, tomorrow, I expect to see more Metal Hero reviews, along with Comic Corners, and one enemy, two Shimonji Moonlight Fantasy. So, this is pretty much it particular view. Tomorrow, like I mentioned, I already mentioned what I said. So, Please be heard to like, comment, subscribe, turn notifications, and do not hit that dislike button. I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.